So I just bought an iPhone 4. Okay, nothing special. It's literally just iPhone 4. But I also bought something else. And with that, today, we are going to be turning this plain ordinary iPhone 4 into a framed wall art? How? Well, just continue watching this video to find out. Okay, so a little bit of backstory here. You can totally skip this part. It's totally fine if you skip this. I think I first saw this kind of iPhones into wall art thing last year when I think I read about it in a news article online. I just forgot about it because the kit was a bit too expensive for my family back then. But now that I've moved into a new house, I want my room to look cooler and match my interests more. Because my previous room is really just blue walls and a bed and a desk and that's it. So I want my room to represent my interests more. Then Luke Miani, an Apple YouTuber that I watch often, bought an iPhone 5 got the kit and took it apart and hung it on the wall of his studio and I'll link his video in the description it's really good and now that my family's economic situation has improved significantly I finally have the money on this small project so I went on to unfabricate.io which is the company that made the wall frame kit you basically just take your iPhone apart and glue your components on there and order one of those kits. Then I bought the cheapest iPhone 4 I can find on eBay. Then I just bought the cheapest iPhone 4 that I can find on eBay that isn't cracked, which cost me another 9 or 10 bucks. They really aren't that expensive, they're like dirt cheap. And why did I choose iPhone 4 when I can choose iPhone 5 or iPhone 3G or something? Be and why? Well, it's because it is hands down my favorite iPhone design ever. Glass front and back stacked on top of a stainless steel frame. You can clearly see that it is the inspiration for the iPhone 8 and later iPhone's designs. And especially the iPhone 12 series with its flat edges clearly borrowed from iPhone 4. But let's just get into the real topic here. And also kind of hard to believe that 3.5 inches was an acceptable screen size back then. So from this point on in the video, I'm just going to do voiceovers uh, about how I'm taking apart the phone and a uh, little brief information and history on the iPhone 4. So right now I just took off the back plate, which is quite easy by removing the pentacle screws. And now I'm trying to remove the logic board, which is pretty hard since there are a lot of little screws. There are also Apple proprietary trial screws, so it's pretty hard to remove. Well, I stopped the time lapse because I was having some trouble removing the... I don't know what the screw is called, but it's a screw used to secure an iPhone's logic board. And I was having trouble removing it. The guy told me that I should use a flathead screwdriver, but it just wouldn't budge. But... Well, I can just remove it with this the opening tool, the metal one. So yeah, they should improve their guide a little bit. <laughs> Let's switch camera angles because my phone is running out of battery, so I need to connect it to the charger. But yeah, I have re removed the final screw and now the logic board should just come right out. Or will it? So, there's actually a random piece of black tape, for whatever reason, so... And under there is another screw. So, we need to get that out of the way before we remove the logic board. Okay, I don't know where it went. Now, the logic board just comes right out. So let's move on to the speaker assembly and the 30 pin connector. So unlike modern iPhones, the iPhone 4 actually has the charging port and the speaker assembly separate instead of being uh, fused together as a single unit like what we have today. The iFixit guide rated removing the iPhone 4 screen as difficult, and I can see why. 
So because iPhone 4 actually opens from back to front, like most modern day Android phones, screen replacement and removals without replacing the entire frame is very difficult. Like you literally have to pry the screen up and you can also damage it during the process, but we don't really care about that. But just saying, it really is pretty difficult to remove the iPhone 4 screen. You can see me struggle with my suction cup and the plastic pick. Mm, yeah. But we are finally there. We just, the screen's already lifting up. We just need to get the top part removed. And we have to route the cable through this little hole right here. And the screen should be out. And there are like clips. Ooh, lots of glue also. And you can see the cable coming through this little hole here. And our screen is out. I'm not sure if it's supposed to turn out this way though, exposing the backlight. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be this way. So now we have our screen full of suction cup marks. We can also have our home button now. And so I also have it have to route it through this really, really tiny hole here. I don't know if you can even see it on camera, but okay. Home buttons out too. Nice. It's just the little things now. So we need to get our earpiece out and the front facing camera and also the volume and power buttons and we are basically done. Now that we have all the pieces taken out, this is what it will approximately look like when I glue and hang it on the wall. So let's just unpack it and glue everything down. I just used up all of the liquid glue because it told me to be conservative with the glue, but I just used way too much of it. So that's why I'm using double-sided tape now. I shouldn't make that much of a difference. Voice over time, so here you can see me cutting up and carefully gluing everything onto the template with double sided tape. You can see me cutting carefully around the ribbon cable so I don't cut into the cable. And I'm just making sure that everything fits so it'll glue on perfectly and won't fall off in the near future. I thought the gluing will be easy, but it's actually pretty challenging. And finally, after two hours of taking the phone apart and gluing, glow glo and behold, my final result. I'm also pleased to report that everything went nicely and now I have this beautiful, unique, and technical piece of art, I will say, with my favorite iPhone generation taken apart, put behind the plastic cover, and inside the frame, and hung on my wall, my room represents me as a person and my interests much better now, and this will probably be the first thing that catches someone's eye when they first enter my room. Yes, it might have costed me $60 plus tax and 2 hours of work to get this, but that just makes it more unique and special. I am really happy with how this turned out, and I also hope that you enjoyed this video. I'll link the website I bought this kit from in the description. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!